about Matrix V. In 1999, the same year the Matrix V project began, the public was shown the movie Matrix in theaters, which gave a glimpse into the possibilities inherent in technological manipulation of society and individual reality. It left a lot of people thinking about the reality in which we exist on this planet. But, there is a real matrix that is even larger than anything even hinted at in the movie, a matrix in which human experience on Earth is but a small part of a much larger picture, beyond society, beyond the planet, beyond the alien paradigms, beyond religion, and beyond all belief systems on the third and fourth densities. The big questions that people have on this planet, why we're here, who we really are and what life is really about, are not questions that cultures have answers for. There are plenty of New Age paradigms around, but none of them have any real answers either, which is why people are stuck on the eternal search for truth. They won't find it within their earthbound personality, within all the paradigms that permeate all cultures on the planet that depend on identification with body and gender, and they won't find it in the paradigms of religion. Where is it, and what is really going on here on Earth? One of the keys to discovery of the ultimate matrix is out-of-body experience and long-time observation of what is actually out there, who we really are, and what it means to incarnate in a body here on Earth. Matrix V is all about your higher self, who you really are, your journey of self-discovery on this planet, and what's really going on, both here on Earth and in the density levels which lie just outside our third density level. It is not based on beliefs or belief systems. The scope of the material in Matrix V exceeds that of any existing literature which will become quite evident to the reader. If you identify with your body or your gender, or are comfortable in your human existence, do not buy Matrix V. You will not be ready for this advanced material, which is geared toward advanced, dominant and final third density incarnational perspectives. Matrix V is, no doubt, one of the most spiritually enlightening books ever printed, and at the same time to the factions that control this planet, and control anything anywhere. This is the most dangerous information ever released to mankind because it discusses who we really are, what the polarity-based control structures are really about, and the truth about incarnational experience on Earth. It is also a book that concerns accurate information about what is beyond the third density and higher, based on direct observational explorations that have lasted more than a decade. It is a book that deals with the big questions in life, who we are, and why we are here. It can be safely said that it accurately describes, based on direct observational experience, the nature of the higher self and human incarnations, ancient manipulation of human DNA, the genderization of the human body, the mechanics of incarnation and detailed information on the realms which we perceive when we become independent of the body after physical death. Matrix V, in effect, decodes Earth reality, as well as the reality beyond the Earth experience, in a way that has never been achieved in human literature. Are you a man or a woman? No. You are an androgynous being using a genderized body for experience. Only men and women buy into the cultural belief, which promotes identification with the body and gender, and they will continue to revel in earth life and seek gratification and fulfillment of the DNA programming to which they have become slaves. The actual beginning point of these explorations started experientially with actual exploration of other densities slightly out of phase with ours, using out-of-body travel, however, the scope of this book far exceeds anything ever completed by Robert Monroe author of three famous books on the subject, Journeys Out of the Body, Far Journeys, and Ultimate Journey. In fact, this book is so far beyond the material Robert Monroe or any other explorer has ever released that it constitutes a major key for discovery for those higher self-incarnations that are on the verge of spiraling out of this reality altogether. If you are at a position in life at this time where you seek more than what is around you in the controlled, idiotic culture we live in, more than religions, channeling, alien contacts, belief systems and the pathetic body of knowledge on this planet, Matrix V is for you. For more than two years, we have been leaking some of the information out to the public, who have responded with questions, and a tremendous body of follow-up material has developed which enhances the main series of segments which are collectively called information for very advanced, dominant and final incarnations. The Real Matrix, Above and Beyond there have been stories for years about experiments where a clear plate is placed in a fish tank and left for an extended period. When the plate is removed, the fish generally remain on their respective side of the tank. The same thing happens when you put gnats in a covered jar for a while, and then remove the cover. Only a few adventurous creatures emerge, but the bulk of them remain in their self-imposed isolation from the rest of the universe. One of the primary attributes possessed by those few adventurous individuals who escape the jar is awareness, awareness of the jar, the top and a sense of potential beyond the top, that exceeds that of the general population. 
What happened to the fish in the tank and the gnats in the jar? Somehow, their original intent, freedom, and nature was subverted by something else, first imposed from an external source and then willingly, but unconsciously, self-imposed with equal vigor in deference to the perceived existence of the status quo. The same thing happens to individuals having a human experience. An interesting description of this process was mentioned by author Tarthang Tolku in his 1978 book entitled Skillful Means, Gentle Ways to Successful Work, Berkeley, C.A., Dharma Publishing, 1978, 5-6. Tolku summarizes the social process. Our obstacles to inner freedom are usually formed during childhood. As children we know how we feel about things, and we seldom hesitate to make our feelings known. But pressure from family and friends leads us to adopt the more narrow views and patterns that conform to what people expect. When our natural ideas and feelings are discouraged, we grow out of touch with our senses, and the flow of communication between our bodies and minds is inhibited, we no longer know what we truly feel. As the patterns of suppression grow stronger and more fixed, our opportunities for self-expression diminish. We become so used to conforming, that as we grow older we let these patterns rule our lives, we become strangers to ourselves. Most social institutions of great significance on this planet, religions, governments, and cultural traditions, actively promote their version of information dealing with the big questions in life. Who are we? Why are we here? What more is out there? Yet, anyone having the time to do any degree of research at all eventually realizes that what we are faced with is a situation where open deceit has been institutionalized on a planetary scale. Faced with that, how are we to find out the answers to these big questions? The thing that people readily seem to do is search for a philosophy or other mental paradigm, way of thinking or perceiving, in an attempt to balance the apparent failure of the planetary social structure and give them a sense of peace of mind. But, that doesn't work, because the actual nature of what is happening concerns things that transcend social consciousness, which is the main source of information for most people. But, since you can't solve a problem using the same perceptive viewpoint in which it was created, nothing goes anywhere and everything stays the same with the game. You must get outside the box. The 1999 movie Matrix was surely, in some way, metaphorically or otherwise, patterned after the Matrix book series, beginning with the 1988 book The Matrix Understanding Planetary Power Structures, followed by all our other books, in terms of discussing covered control and manipulation of the planetary population by nested factions vastly different from what the population would expect, given their culturally programmed view of reality. I have always marveled at the synchronicity of the appearance of this film, in an almost Montauk-like fashion, in this time stream. Of course, there are no coincidences, linear perspective, only synchronicity, nonlinear, so that shouldn't have been a surprise. Now that the movie is in the public mind, and sequels are virtually in the can, the notion that reality can be manipulated in order to control the population is now in the public awareness, albeit even as science fiction. There is a long list of synchronicities connected with the Matrix, ever since I put it together and published it in 1988. In terms of the personal exploration of our planetary reality, as well as the control systems behind it, one of the most useful developments during the last several years was the understanding of the unique mental reality maps and belief systems that characterize life experience on this planet. The seminal book on the subject, The Paradigm Conspiracy, by Christopher Largent and Denise Breton, was allegedly suppressed by the owners of the publishing company through negative marketing after discovering that a staff editor had approved the project and it was printed. I made contact with the authors, and they told me that they had been inspired to do the book after they read Matrix 2, which of course is another instance of synchronicity. And, it was nice to have inspired such a piece of work. You are encouraged to read the paradigm conspiracy, so you will understand of how individuals and populations are socially programmed to think, act and believe by mind maps, actively shutting down the internal nature of people and involving them in a sole abusive social paradigm. In short, it is about the nature of a major component of the matrix on Earth. That's why the senior publisher wasn't too keen on marketing it. See Appendix D for some of their observations. Get the book. My personal opinion is that it is a vital key, along with the Matrix books, to understanding the local Matrix, which here is for the mind what the Matrix was to the population in the movie, a barrier to thought and perception. This understanding is essential, for those predisposed to evolve their perspective, in order understand and transcend the box which makes up the social reality in which we individually live. The socio-technical side is covered in Matrix 3. Now that we've entered the next century, it is a certainty that many people have exceeded the mental map of reality endorsed by orthodox social consciousness, 
and there is a greater call for accuracy that has kept PAR with the search for truth, which of course is relative. To that end, especially considering personal involvement with a series of very interesting evolutionary processes during the last four years, a new matrix has manifested itself one which far transcends all before it. The real nature of reality makes planet Earth a grain of sand on a beach, albeit a very interesting grain of sand. In terms of experience, reality has physical, mental, emotional, social, planetary, spiritual and dimensional density aspects to it. Typically, in an attempt to define the real matrix, the last three are not figured into the equation, because they generate knowledge and information which transcends social perception, and no one can see the box or what it's made of. On Earth, the general population is barely aware of planetary aspects beyond wars and weather fronts. Spiritual aspects? Well, look around you and see the blind lead the blind. For individuals, these aspects form a unique composite that specifically suits each unique incarnational experience. For a great many people, however, reality does not include spiritual, planetary and dimension density aspects to any significant degree. Such people are totally immersed in social and cultural awareness, but have little else in their lives, never suspecting that life is a lot more interesting than they could ever dream. For many others, however, life is different and continues to evolve into a series of interesting adventures where wisdom is learned and growth occurs in leaps and bounds. One group isn't better than the other. They just have different perspectives and levels of general awareness at the box. Non-physical experience is statistically commonplace. The greatest illusion is that we have limitations. Robert A. Monroe Many statistical studies have been done over the years on the population in order to determine the degree to which people experience awareness outside and apart from any awareness while in the physical body, Green 1968, Pointon 1975, Blackmore 1982, 1983, 1984, Irwin 1988, and Glickson, 1989. A conservative estimate is that 35 out of every 100 people have regular or periodic out-of-body awareness. That means that in the United States alone 98 million people could be familiar with the idea, to one degree or another, that they are not their body, but they as persons are more than their body and can have awareness, mobility and a totally separate existence apart from it. Yet, because of the degree of social programming and body identification and gender identification, never mind job identification and who knows what else, people are hesitant to extend the implications of that knowledge into their lives, mainly because they don't know who they are or why they are here. Using these same percentages, together with some deep knowledge about the nature of different kinds of human incarnations on this planet, it is possible to say that theoretically 735 million people out of 6 billion have had these kind of experiences at least once in their lives about 13% of the population of the planet can relate to experience and independent existence apart from organic bodies. That's a lot of out-of-body experiences. Why 13%? Since at this time about 65% of the humans on Earth at this time are not, in actual fact, higher self-incarnations, that leaves 35%, so 35% of 35% is about 13%. The majority of the human population at this time is actually incarnated animal spirit from one species or another. The ratio used to be different earlier in the history of the planet, I am told, and has varied depending on the dynamic present on the planet at that time. More organic bodies are available here than higher selves can use for incarnation purposes. It is known that Monroe knew about this, but never revealed this in his books. That kind of human experience is different than the human experience of higher self incarnations. More information on this is in the narrative. Ever wonder why some religious belief systems feature reincarnation as animals? Now you know. A member of the British royal family wanted to come back as a virus to get rid of planetary population, when asked if he believed in reincarnation a couple years ago. If nothing else, that statement lays his regressive awareness out on the table for all to examine. Maybe he should go on Survivor. Knowledge of the layout and dynamics involved with these realms is some of the most closely guarded information on the planet, because public knowledge of the true nature of reality could seriously damage Earth culture control and manipulation structures. See the article in Appendix B entitled Organized Planetary Out-of-Body Activities and Polarity Influence and it is for this reason that general exploration in these areas has been discouraged by orthodoxy, along with frequent reminders to re-stimulate cultural and genetic programming relative to the body. They can't have truly free entities wandering around telling the population they've been lied to their whole lives about the nature of the universe, can they? According to Robert Monroe, the research at the Monroe Institute encountered hundreds, if not thousands of intelligent beings of all types, just a phase shift away from our reality. However, 
in Ultimate Journey Monroe makes the statement that they did not find any non-human beings in the physical universe. That statement, which is one of the curious anomalies in the book, when compared with what we know to be the case, leads one to wonder if it had to be put there because Robert Monroe was under some sort of duress from the government folks who hobnobbed at the Institute not to add to the existing public drama about aliens. That's the only sensible conclusion, based on the evidence. There are a couple more anomalies, and after you read and understand this book you will have the knowledge to recognize them, plus you can reread the Monroe books with an understanding that exceeded that of Monroe himself at the time he wrote the books. Monroe stated that at the time he wrote the book, the estimate for out-of-body experience was 25% of the population, yet available literature and studies dated from years earlier indicated the approximation of 35%. Was this a deliberate slight misrepresentation given to underplay the commonality of experience? You decide. Matrix V represents, in terms of spiritual growth information, some of the most powerful information that will ever be released on this planet, and it will help you decode a lot of things. Only those who have, or are on the edge of, an advanced current incarnational perspective will be moved by their higher self to find and read this material. But, try and remember to walk your talk, striving for balance, and always opt for the highest perspective, relative to the specific issue at hand, that you have in your mind, in order to help maintain that balance. Frankly, this book is the only book that exists on the planet right now that has this high level of information. For the advanced incarnation, 98% of the literature and information on the planet is pure synthetic bullshit designed to keep you in one box or another. It definitely frees up your time for real evolution when you realign your priorities. One recent television program on the Sci-Fi Channel that started in 2000 is John Edwards Crossing Over, in which longtime psychic John Edwards becomes a conduit for those seeking validation relative to relatives that have passed. To the audience, and probably John Edwards himself, the place he is communicating with is just over there as opposed to over here, with no other information. Which, of course, is why it is allowed on public programming. Even this little bit of cosmic leakage isn't well tolerated. On an episode of Larry King Live on March 6, 2001, John Edwards was the guest. King brought on a Leon Yaroff, skeptic, Rabbi Botak, religion, and Paul Kurtz, materialist, in order to counteract the paradigm stretch Edwards represented. Yaroff is well known for his position, which isn't far away from the amazing Randy, but more technical. And, Rabbi Botek was outraged that the public should be getting anything like the Edwards show because it threatens the stability of religions. You could see the frantic fear in the eyes of the rabbi. He was one step short of hauling out his prayer shawl. Kurtz, the materialist, gave a predictably bland can't measure it from here, it's not real routine. All of this was, of course, a foreseeable course of events. I emailed CNN at Turner Communications, they invited comments, and gave them my opinion of their circus performance, while at the same time giving them due credit for even having him on at all. Their reply was curt, thank you for contacting CNN Interactive and for giving us your input about Larry King Live. Comments are rooted to the producers for review and consideration. Right. If they only knew the truth about the real Matrix, well, they wouldn't know what to do with it, I thought. Edwards is dealing with recently past beings dawdling on the fourth density, still attached to Earth programming, their former incarnations, and don't know there is anything beyond over there, which there is, of course. It's pretty much infinite. So are we. Just as an experiment, time was spent reviewing the scope and nature of material currently available to the public, especially on the Internet, about these matters. There were so many dead ends spread throughout literature and New Age communities on out-of-body experience with information polluted by religious belief systems and mindless mental meandering, that it's a wonder anyone can get anywhere at all with it. Not all the information was directly misleading, but the expanse of the information was very limited. Most of the material out there seems confusing people having different unusual experiences, but interpreting it from different perceptual viewpoints reflecting their cultural mindset, yet it is the nature of their incarnational perspective that is most important, not generally understood and almost always ignored because the level of investigation never typically rises above the perspective of social consciousness a low to mid-level incarnational perspective, and the people doing the investigation don't have a clue. There are people who do have a clue, who have accurate information and are making it available. That's what this is about. The information in this book arises from continued, careful observation by several people over many years. The information is not open to conventional debate, because this material is based on observational experience not opinions based on beliefs having no basis in experience. 
Get it? You can surely have your opinion, but keep it to yourself to process internally, because it's going to change. That's for a certain. Things will begin to happen in your life after you read this book, to the degree that you are aligning your persona with your higher self, which will be profound guaranteed. Essential Resources and Recommended Reading Material First of all, there are several books that we recommend that you read as soon as possible, if you haven't already, that will enhance your understanding of the context and nature of the greater reality we speak of here. Red Monroe's three books, Journey Out of the Body, Far Journeys, and Ultimate Journey, and as far as social mind control is concerned, The Paradigm Conspiracy. We have included the handbook for the new paradigm within this book, including the material missing in book two and the four additional essays, as it provides much helpful material in terms of personal alignment and balance in the midst of the chaotic change we are seeing around us, and it is referred to frequently within this book. The handbook for the new paradigm is basically about the general plan of the dark side to inject their perspective upward into the higher densities, why it will fail, potential light side polarity activities, the chaos to shortly ensue on the planet, and what the aware incarnation should take into account and do, or be, during this upcoming period. Robert Monroe, Planetary Pioneer Robert Monroe, 1916-1995, a veteran of more than 30 years of consciousness research, was a true pioneer in terms of the evolution of human consciousness. The notable work in terms of investigations into the future of man appeared in Far Journeys. In those books, Monroe details his discovery that the Earth is surrounded by bands in which individuals congregate after physical death, for varying lengths of time, based on their individual resonant vibration and belief systems. Monroe's discoveries about these rings-slash-bands are important because of what he discovers later about them around the time period of 3000 CE. Monroe discovered that the Earth was surrounded by several rings, or bands, that appeared deep gray or brown in color, and that these bands were occupied by discarnate or exteriorized entities who either still occupied physical bodies or who had recently left their bodies as a result of the death of the body. These bands, described in order of their placement and progression away from the planet, appeared to be broken out as follows. The first band, lower fourth density. The first band appeared to be occupied by entities who appeared to have a preoccupation with distortions of the original survival imprint, and were still bound conceptually to time-space materiality. From the viewpoint of advanced entities Monroe was in regular communication with, this first band reflected a mass of discordant, undirected thought radiation. The first band is composed of several distinctly different sub-bands. The first band is the location of entities communicated with by John Edwards on his crossing over program. The first subband was occupied by exteriorized entities who still attempted to participate in physical life, albeit with no success, and seemed to be aware of nothing beyond the physical existence they had left. The second subband was occupied by exteriorized entities who were still attached to the physical body in current Earth space-time who were evidently in an out-of-body state, attempting to continue with a physical waking activity. Because of this mode of action, from a more expanded perspective they would seem to disappear from view right in the middle of their activity, on that level, as they awoke back into their physical body. The third subband is occupied by exteriorized entities who have permanently left their physical existence but do not realize it, and are trying to continue a habitual physical existence, often remaining around familiar occupied bodies, still embodied friends and acquaintances, while acting out emotionally based drives and fears. Monroe viewed this subband as one of the major blockages to the flow of human learning experience, and stated that the number of entities in this area will keep increasing as long as specific kinds of human values exist on Earth. The fourth subband is occupied by exteriorized beings who are still attached to the reality of physical matter, on the third density, although they do realize that they have become exteriorized. These entities have adopted an anything-goes attitude and mental framework in which they express themselves through replicas of physical reality in unusual and bizarre ways. Monroe illustrated one example of a bizarre manner of expression when he told of coming across a seething, squirming pile of human forms trying to sexually stimulate each other to no avail, since they did not in reality still have a physical body capable of such interaction. The second band contains exteriorized beings that realize they are no longer in physical form in physical human life, but left their physical life with no awareness or concept that any other possibility for existence exists. Monroe observed that entities in this band appeared to remain motionless and passive, but retained an air of expectancy. Mid-fourth density. The third band, or ring, contains exteriorized beings who know they have passed through physical death, and still retain a belief system relative to what to expect after physical death. It is this area that was mentioned in the book War in Heaven. Because of this, the third band was broken down into innumerable subbands coincident with belief system orientation. 
From another viewpoint, if a number of people have a similar belief, as propagated in religious belief systems, for example, they all end up creating a facsimile reality structure where they all congregate because like attracts like. Want to have your own flock for a while? It's another box experience. This band is perhaps the largest one, and is also a very manipulative place with all the same game playing and power struggles that went on in physical embodiment on Earth. This band is also the source for the comment there are many mansions in heaven. It is also worthy to note that those to believe that there is one life to live and then nothing congregate at their own resonant level within this band. Monroe described seeing billions of entities, lying in stasis, side by side, in rows. Unless you know that consciousness, energy and intent create the nature of reality, welcome to an extended stay in this area within the third band. It's just experience. High fourth density. The fourth band contains exteriorized entities that are more advanced in consciousness than those on the bands below, and have arrived from outside the band areas to prepare for their final human experience on the earth below. From the perspective of those within this band, when an entity on earth who is advanced in consciousness dies, they quickly pass through all the bands and disappear from perception in a wink. The fourth band is also where the park on focus level 27 is located. This is discussed in the narrative. Future visions, the bands disappear by 3000 CE. When Robert Monroe was taken to a period in his travels to the earth in the future, around 3000 CE, he was surprised to learn that the deep gray and brown band slash rings were no longer around the planet. Instead, there was a single flat ring, which radiated light of its own accord. The ring was full of communication, but no discordant noise. There were no cities or evidence of any mechanized civilization on the surface of the planet. The air was clean, clear, and the ecological balance of the planet was restored. He questioned the entity accompanying him about the environment, and it was said that the ecological balance was restored by design, not by virtue of a disaster followed by random rebound back to health. There were no people at all living in masse on the planet, and this was also by design. In fact, the whole planet was at a different frequency level. The presence of the bands was connected with the simultaneous incarnation process, which ended. Monroe eventually came across entities on the planet, but they were non-physical and used nonverbal communication. They told him that they did use physical bodies on occasion, and that they kept the bodies, which they referred to as containers, manifested from thought patterns using any mass at hand, and energy cocoons to keep them preserved, ready for use and in good condition. These entities, even while occupying a body, could transmute matter. One of them materialized a piece of fruit, and gave it to Monroe, who consumed it with relish. They told Monroe he could experience compressed learning modes, which they defined as being able to experience Earth consciousness from the viewpoint of every species they could, in essence, integrate their consciousness at will with any life form, experience that life form, and disengage their consciousness from it. There had obviously been a heavy withdrawal from survival imprints in the body consciousness of the civilization of the old Earth. They could even have the experience of being eaten alive, the genetic memory of horror for humans in a body for millions of years, and pop out again with ease. There was no need for sleep, and they could draw energy from ambient space, whether they used a body or not. Now, this is the interesting part. They told Monroe that entities newly arriving on Earth at that time period first had to experience one human life cycle in a period of time before the changes were made, and then they were allowed to spend time there. Monroe was told that these one-time experiences were going on in the 20th century for some of those destined to return to occupy the dimensional area around Earth in 3000 CE+. Those who graduated from the Earth environment in 3000 CE did not return to Earth. They no longer needed to experience Earth and could take on physical forms in lessening degrees of density and radiation patterns until they no longer felt the need to do so, on their journey to the infinite growth patterns of consciousness that are available for all to experience, eventually. The experience of spiritual incarnation through an organic body. Why come to Earth in the first place? Earth is not the only place in the universe where there is a time-space reality system, nor does it lie on the only vibratory level where there are space-time realities, but life here because of the nature of life on Earth and the extreme dualities and polarities involved, represents one of those places that represents a unique challenge to any entity who has problems to work out that require such a location. According to Monroe, any time-space scenario, of which Earth is a whopper, has unique aspects which contribute interesting ways to the development of both intelligence, awareness, and experience. You won't find an entity like sixth-level Jehovah entities who are even willing to go through such experience. Because of that, Many entities that reside on other vibratory levels have not developed knowledge of what love, compassion, and empathy really are that's why they feel the need to be obeyed, 
worshipped, and identify with control and manipulation. Going to a level where the normal non-physical rules of existence are suspended is beyond their willingness to give up their identity with control. Next, it requires that you select a propitious birth entry point with appropriate genetic, environmental, social, political, and economic patterns that you calculate will ensure realization of the very purpose for your entry into third density, despite the existence of variable that could severely impact the realization of one's purpose, and the whole journey may involve taking certain actions to realign the probable slash possible income. Since there are many who seek embodiment experiences, and many who seek to avoid it at all cost, very often a specific kind of birth entry point is not available, and one is presented with less than ideal circumstances. It's sort of like bungee jumping without the cord. Bam! Out of the tube with previous memories veiled and into the light. No longer in your natural state, you suddenly discover that the physical body has severe restraints. A while is spent playing with your toes and other strange appendages, trying to obtain control over them before they obtain apparent control over you, that happens later when body consciousness is reinforced to the maximum through social conditioning. In your natural state, energy simply flowed to you. Now you have this overwhelming desire to consume nourishment for the body, amidst a cacophony of sensory overload, genetically programmed drives, and later, raging hormones, genetically, and later culturally, programmed response patterns which become habit, and genetic memories from anyone who ever had anything to do with the DNA patterns the body is composed of. Combine all of these with pain, pleasure, sexual stimulation, and body-driven emotional complexes. What a bungee jump! Since you are seemingly stuck in a genderized body, you are subject to various brain learning mechanisms. Primary learning occurs when you focus on something. What you do not have a focus on, when you have a focus on something else, is the stuff involved with secondary learning processes, and a third form of input occurs while your body is sleeping and you end up in a brief, non-functional void. Initially, and probably throughout a good part of your life, your attention is motivated by virtue of the pain-pleasure cycle. Then, you go to cultural school. School is a process of non-educational programming stressing low-order repetitive experiences and the physical senses, which results in an unnatural situation centered around the knowledge, manipulation, and control of physical matter and low-order energy systems geared toward reinforcing survival imprints and social ego orientation, as well as belief patterns, many of which are not at all based on actual experience, which results in the establishment of a secondary psychological drive-in. Society to look for what is true. The process also eliminates any remaining threads of contact with essence memory and knowledge of your actual origin and identity. Then, you interact in society. Society is where the individual is conditioned to identify with the body and then the ego slash image, in that order, and accumulate emotional attachments relating only to expression in a time-space reality, to the degree where a compulsive need develops to re-enter the time-space continuum, trapped on the lower rings, again, solely for the purpose of satisfying the need to complete physical agenda. Human existence can become addictive. The original genetic survival drive of the body becomes further distorted through cultural programming and results in distorted patterns which focus on body protection, where is that gun, body maintenance, what is that new aftershave, sexuality, and reproduction, and the need to protect things that one owns in order to support the body. As if that is not enough, sex as a creative act is distorted to the point where it results in irrational and restrictive attachments and commitments based on cultural ideas that are actually unattainable besides being an addictive perspective itself. But, they don't tell you that, do they? You'll understand a lot more as you read this book. You are advised to go through the narrative once, read the Q&A and then reread the narrative for the maximum impression. Important, you may believe you are a male slash man, or a female slash woman, when you as an androgynous spiritual being operating through a body buy into the cultural lie and the DNA programming that says or makes it seem you are your body and the gender of the body. Are you really a male? or a female. No. However, most incarnations here think they are. When you read the term male slash man or female slash woman later in the main narrative, the author is talking about those who at this time believe they are their body and gender, not the spiritual being who they really are. If you take some of the material relating to gender personally, that shows your orientation, right? Right. To be offended on one hand, and at the same time claim to be in a spiritual orientation, just shows you are trying to fool yourself. You can't, so don't try. You would do better, to the degree you can, to move toward orientation with you, and alignment of your persona with who you really are. No one knows you better than you. Your persona is temporary. The focus on all of this is further reinforced, 
especially if the skin of the body you inhabit is of a shade that provokes judgment among the unenlightened who identify with the body, by cultural importation of opiate drugs by the controlling powers of society, inundation with neurologically mind-bending pharmaceuticals and the rest of it, all of it designed specifically to keep the attention of your consciousness bound within the purview of the lower three structural areas of the brain, as well as to financially sustain cultural and economic infrastructures based on ego, security, image, sensation, and power dash all of which have absolutely nothing to do with who the entity really is or why the entity is here on earth in the first place. All of this results in the search for the meaning of life, because the creative energy within the essence, the spirit, is functionally diminished to where the source and one's true identity, is forgotten. All of this transforms the previously benign, all-knowing being into a chaotic mixture of reaction-based judgmental complexes, promoting psychological projection, instead of assuming personal responsibility for one's actions, and synthetic cultural reality to the exclusion of all else. Are you sure you want to come to Earth? Now you understand why the band slash rings Monroe discovered do exist. Don't worry, we'll eventually get to the discussion of the future, but we must preface that discussion with the following, how can you escape being tied to the rings once you leave your body? You must realize, truly realize, that you are not your body, that emotional attachments relate only to space-time reality, the cultural environment, you must retain the idea of love and release the idea of sexuality, divest yourself of sexual ties, and lighten the load by refusing to bond lasting emotion to any physical act or the actions of other beings, and make an effort to conduct yourself in the eternal now. Furthermore, physical objects exist in space-time to be used, not owned. We actually own nothing and no one dash even the body we use is borrowed material, even if the state decides to establish a chattel mortgage on the body by virtue of the birth certificate and its associated cultural adhesion contract, creating a synthetic reality structure it programs us to buy into. There is so much more, but that's what this book is about. Monroe's advice about experience on earth was to 1. Store the memory, experience, and wisdom in life and leave the emotion connected with the experience behind. 2. Recognize that you are responsible for the results of your actions within a space-time continuum. 3. Enjoy the cosmic humor in life. You need to expand beyond social consciousness to see it. 4. Seek to remove emotional energy from your being connected with pain-slash-pleasure connected memory patterns. 5. Maximize sleep periods, promoting tertiary learning processes, creating a break from left brain thought patterns and physical input. A lot of these recommendations Monroe made with the intention of giving people guidance on purging habitual thought patterns and beliefs. If everyone took his advice, John Edwards would play to an empty house. Of course, that's not going to happen. Monroe's meeting with some incarnational selves. An interesting interaction in Ultimate Journey, Chapter 12, occurred between Robert Monroe and what he termed his executive committee. In his travels outside third density, Monroe encountered this group of entities who indicated that in all the times during his life where he had anomalous incidents, such as coming through unscathed after an accident, or finding something you really needed, just when you needed it, or listening to a subtle voice and acting on it, it was them, either one or more, sometimes even from other energy systems, who actually manipulated circumstances in physical reality to allow Monroe to reach an understanding or goal which was in line with his incarnational mandates the main purposes, intent, and experience desired by the higher self in the first place relative to that specific incarnation. Asked by Monroe if they were his guardian angels they replied. We aren't your anything. You and we are the same. You've been helping yourself all the time. We are just the part that helps you remember. Most surely, adventures in consciousness are sometimes like psychotherapy on steroids, producing tremendous leaps in understanding and knowingness. Monroe asked why people went through multiple lifetimes, and it was indicated that the unique nature of experience as a human meant that it was not possible to get enough third density experience in one incarnation. These other components of Monroe's higher self indicated that information from more than a thousand incarnations on Earth, relative to his higher self, is immediately on hand. Every possible situation is here, every emotion. There is nothing you can encounter in an Earth life that isn't stored here, in fifty different ways. They told him that he had incarnated this time to pick up one final piece of experience, and that after this they would be gone to a place only Monroe's eye there, higher self, could tell. They also indicated that there was another incarnation of his higher self on earth at the same time as Monroe, in order to maximize the chances of getting the experience his higher self wanted. This split final approach is very unique, but it made the two almost functionally equivalent to parallel dominance. For example, Monroe was still hung up on earth existence, despite his experiences, 
while the other parallel incarnation in Russia was very psychic. They also indicated that other incarnations of his higher self had been sent to Earth, but that some become so locked up in a belief system that they never come back here, not even during sleep. They said, we lose nine out of ten that way. We are there to catch them when they fall through the cracks. So, we see that it is even possible to have multiple incarnations in a single time period, but normally all the simultaneous incarnations are in different periods because the different dynamics provide more varied experience. Although not on third density Earth, sequential incarnations in third density are typical of alien experiential processes. A lengthy experiential process for beings in societies that are usually socially boring, where everyone looks the same, acts the same, etc. Monroe pondered on the idea of the incarnations that had seemingly run astray by being caught up in belief systems, and indicated that it seemed like a waste, but he was told that much was learned from what happened in those experiences. there are no wasted incarnational experiences. It also appears that one task of higher self complexes is to pick up previous personalities who had become so overwhelmed with earth life, its addictions and belief systems that the essence of the personality was unreachable, and restore those personalities. One of the more interesting discussions about what Monroe called the I there, what we refer to as the higher self, revolved around a discussion about an unnamed field of energy which penetrates both inside and outside of space-time, throughout all the densities. According to Monroe, this spectrum of energy was seen as divided into various bands, one of which involves an aspect of this field that actually informs or enfolds intelligence into life forms. According to information given to Monroe, the higher self is composed solely of this field energy. Orthodox Research on Consciousness and Experience Levels Although there are many sources of information relating to out-of-body experience, research indicates that one of the main sources of technical information on consciousness and levels of experience, and the multi-density infrastructure in which it sits, comes from the work of Robert Monroe. We did a survey of literature generally available on the subject, and very little work out there goes beyond subjective description, sometimes tempered with semi-religious overtones and explanations dependent on third-density cultural concepts or even babbling from fourth-density entities with one agenda or another. None of the orthodox literature even touches the subject. The work of Charles Tart and a continual string of speculative thought from ongoing conferences are about all the public seems to get. Most studies of consciousness available to the general public seem to mix psychology and psychiatry, together with a smattering of neo-Darwinism and body identification resulting in a continual mind-matter circular discussion which has gone on for years without achieving any success, because real success must come by virtue of a paradigm shift which would expose their perspective as passé. So, people really have no dynamic process of growth in this area available within most cultures on Earth. On purpose. Movement from physical to non-physical awareness. The incarnational hookup to the human body appears to depend on a blending of the energy field generated in the brain with the energy field present in the energy connection with the higher self at a different density and phase difference. Monroe developed a term phasing as a term to assess constant movement of the mind focus between states of perception, relative to movement toward or away from non-physical states. Monroe also discovered that a specific kind of non-physical energy field interpenetrates the entire span of space-time, including everything in third density he called it the M-field. This energy spectrum, at a local level, contains all thought emissions from every being on Earth, with its cacophony of disorganized random thought patterns. According to Monroe, and others who have spent considerable time personally experiencing levels of consciousness, there are entities out there who have the ability to manipulate specific bands of this field to achieve certain effects for their own purposes. This field overlaps the life forms on Earth, but is out of phase with it. Learning to tune parts of the field in or out is part of the process of training. Robert Monroe was instrumental in developing workable techniques. At one point Monroe allegedly developed a machine that would literally exteriorize someone, but its use was discontinued. Hemisync was then developed for the use of students at the Monroe Institute and the general public, and became a valuable tool for personal exploration. Most people who have even touched on the subject of consciousness studies recognize that there are different states of consciousness that one experiences, for instance, as one falls asleep. There is, of course, that famous point between waking and sleep where the body goes to sleep, often with detectable paralysis, while the mind and attention remain fully awake. What is usually discussed is the progression from alpha waves through delta waves of deep sleep, but there is more to this process than meets the eye. According to the understanding provided by Robert Monroe, as the signals from the physical senses fade out while the person remains awake, there is actually a movement of consciousness deeper into this M field, where one eventually begins to perceive series of whole new environments and experiences. Monroe created an arbitrary series of numbers to measure the movement into the field, 
called focus levels, matching distinct perceptual frontiers that appear as awareness moves into this field with an ever-increasing numerical equivalent, creating an initial system to measure the degree of phase shifting. The first step in focus is called focus 10, which is generally described as being in that place where the body is asleep but the mind is awake and alert, the mind focus being slightly shifted from a normal state of being awake, with input from the physical senses much reduced. According to Monroe's research, this level is consistent with the point of conscious entry into the physical world. One of the most interesting levels reached next, as one's awareness begins to move further into the field, was deemed focus 12. Monroe used to use hemi-sync techniques, unique sounds patterns, to induce movement into this area. After one has been to focus 12 enough times, the external sound patterns are no longer necessary. According to Monroe, on focus 12 lies the gateway to the higher self, among other things. A part of what one experiences in focus 12, at least in the early stages, are movement of patterns and colors, and geometrical shapes. One method used to reach the higher self is included in the Q&A section. Focus 12 is a level where individual can have an access point to intuitional information about all their incarnations. Experience begins to include intuitional information processing from feeling-based data. The mind perceives through nonverbal precognitive filtering systems. Access to usual human senses is diminished by about 80%. Synesthesia is a common experience at this level of focus, where one experiences feeling colors, seeing sounds, etc., as sensory processing begins to change. It appears that between major areas depths of focus, there are zones where there is not much activity at all, so-called null zones. Focus 13 and 14 are null zones. The next level of interest was tagged focus 15, marked by an extremely small amount of sensory input from the physical and even more in the M field. At this level intuitional experience becomes very strong. A timeless place containing quantum or large groups of information rather than detailed bits. Information about other places, people, and elements of different time periods can be accessed here and will sometimes be transmitted in bundles of meaning, Monroe calls them rotes. Focus 16 through 20 constitute energy levels that you pass through on your way to focus 21, and do not contain much of interest. The state externally characterized by physical deep sleep and production of delta waves, with the mind fully conscious is called focus 21. In Ultimate Journey, Monroe termed focus 21 as the maximum range of comfortable phase relationship between time-space and M-field participation the edge, and said that from this level of conscious awareness one could verify all the material and concepts related in his books. It is also at focus 21 where it becomes apparent that movement from place to place is a function of will, and that your real intention is a key to where you will end up, instantaneously. This fourth density level is loosely occupied by various kinds of beings on an ongoing basis. The vast level of focus 22 is characterized by human dream realities, as conscious awareness moves further into the field. Lucid dreaming, of course, is characterized by full awareness and the knowledge that you can control the reality you are dreaming, producing. It is that knowingness which transforms the experience into a lucid one. Being in focus 22 and not awake is typical of someone who is in a coma. This is a place where your awareness begins to move further into non-physical fourth density, and your thoughts begin to directly manifest. Everything you think, is. Focus 23 is a lower astral level populated by recently deceased individuals from Earth who do not realize their transition, or believed there was no existence after physical existence, billions of entities remain here asleep and those who are temporarily stuck. Focus 23 is the temporary residence of those who separate from the physical under traumatic circumstances, through suicide, sudden death, or disasters. Insane or near-insane emotionally driven beings are present. Sexual release is motivation of entity inhabitants. This level is also known as the beginning of locale 2, journeys out of the body. The beginning of reality where thought is action. For further description of the activities, and denizens of this area, please refer to journeys. Focus 24 begins the area of where the malleable nature of reality makes it readily apparent that realities are literally, hands-on, a product of what you believe them to be, as one may or may not realize one's total responsibility for what one is literally creating. This level is populated by discarnate entities or those stuck in aberrant behavioral patterns which prevent them from realizing crucial aspects about the nature of reality and moving on. Focus 24 is also described as part of Locale 2. Journeys out of the body. Focus 24 is the beginning of the area of belief system realities, which extends to Focus 26. Focus 25 continues the fourth density band of belief system realities, where groups of people who still maintain strong belief systems fueled by third density earth cultural concepts congregate by resonance, 
since like attracts like. This level is also populated by discarnate entities or those stuck in aberrant behavioral patterns, which prevent them from realizing crucial aspects about the nature of reality and moving on. There are areas in which entities stuck in every major earth thought pattern congregate, until they happen to wonder if there is more, and then they appear to wink out and appear in another fourth density area coincident with their thought patterns, or move to whatever resonant place suits them. Focus 26 is the last area within the band belief system realities, and contains what Monroe referred to as the religious terminus, where religious groups, people of every ironclad earth belief system, congregate until they realize there is more beyond where they are. There is even a temple of Zeus, with some people having even chosen to appear like Jesus and every other religious figure in order to play with, control or manipulate the ex-humans who haven't progressed. There are people here, flush with the newfound power of personal reality manipulation, who see themselves as God and even go so far as demanding to be worshipped. Remember the book War in Heaven? Monroe related just such an incident in Ultimate Journey and described these areas in detail in Far Journeys. For the adventurous who aren't burdened by heavy belief systems and have left their physical existence behind, or who visit here through an OBE from the Earth's surface, Focus 27 begins an area that was created millennia ago, by humans who felt that people needed a place to recover and examine life after their experience on Earth. This level has been called the park, where you can visit the library, containing every work ever created on Earth, which of course includes this book, and virtually all knowledge, even about things not regarding Earth. There are also places for life review, healing centers, classes, and all sorts of activities. Within the next millennium, this too will disappear as everyone advances and it is just not needed anymore. Focus 28 is an astral bridge zone, a buffer area. Experience from here on takes on a wondrous character, beyond anything you have experienced on third density. Focus 29 is where fifth density roughly begins, with advanced non-physical levels extending to Focus 34 where a great collection of higher selves experiencing Earth incarnations exist, moving into Focus 35. Once a higher self decides that it has had enough of Earth incarnations, all the incarnations will be drawn in and the higher self moves further out into the field, up into the 7th or 8th density, where it will typically send out more probes of awareness to experience things on these levels. There appear to be several main nodes of the higher self, the lowest density one sits on the 5th, around Monroe Focus level 34 35 at this time for most beings having third density incarnational experience. There are a limited number of these nodes, although they extend well up into the density levels, where experience goes into profound levels of expression. There are no limits whatsoever, for anything, or anyone. You will create realities with the experience you have had on Earth and elsewhere you will know better what you do not want to create, why, and how polarity thought and lack of balance retard progression and evolution. The Potential Planetary Effect of These Explorations Considering that one of the core beliefs which sustains the view of reality that is programmed into the population is body identification, supplemented and reinforced with gender identification, if you can get a person to buy into that too, and any other identification process that leads a person away from discovery of self and potential evolution, what would it be like, theoretically, if the truth came out? There would be no discrimination based on race or gender, and all the other synthetically created ills of the world based on the body, including consumerism and the world economic structure would go poof, as people no longer bought into the ubiquitous bullshit. Of course, we are all really here. In the larger sense, because it is like it is, not because could be something else. As an analogy, you don't go diving and complain that there is an eel on the ocean floor. You dive for the learning and experience, and you gain knowledge and wisdom. You dive off the coast of the Bahamas because of what you find there, and elsewhere because of what you find there. We are here, purposely, intentionally, to experience and observe as a contribution toward overall growth. For us, Earth is a school. In this incarnational experience, the vehicle is biological with distorted DNA programming, further distorted by a toxic environment, and we have planet full of sleeping humans, most of whom seem to be forest gumping their way through life. That's an experience. 2. Coming in, because of the DNA alterations in your vehicle, your complete memory access has been blocked. You have to work all your life here to gain insight through experience. Talk about a challenge. The journey and the process are important. What better place exists on third density for this opportunity, for the higher self, than on Earth in this timeline? Probably not many. Read on, find out why, and learn about the real matrix in which we exist. According to the author of the following narrative, a friend of mine, who will reveal what's really going on. Val Valerian, August 2001